Sidney Lumet was an outstanding filmmaker who made numerous classics in various decades in a 50-plus something career using diverse cast and stories. He often flies under the radar and is rarely considered in top 10 lists and such, but with a filmography that boasts 12 Angry Men, Serpico, Network, Dog Day Afternoon and Before the Devil Knows You're Dead, his filmmaking talents are on display for all to see. More often than not, an actor will give a career best when they perform in one of his films, and the movies often feel like real life is being depicted, warts and all, with them often being dark, gritty and seedy. The Hill is no exception, a military anti-army prison drama spearheaded by a robust Sean Connery, whose performance in the film is matched by the impeccable supporting cast. I would probably call it Connery's finest performance, had I not already seen him in Lumet's The Offence. Connery is Joe Roberts, a new arrival in a North African military prison during the Second World War, in for having beaten up his commanding officer. He is accompanied by fellow prisoners George Stevens, the meek and soft homesick lad, Jacko King, a black man instantly being flagged as being the wrong colour, Monty Barlett, an overweight, rather morally weak character who wants not to be involved in conflict, and Jock McGrath, a towering tall force of aggressiveness, who takes a disliking to Roberts from the off. The two have bigger problems to worry about, however, as there is warfare of a different kind in this film, as the prisoners must survive the brutish disciplinary methods of the guards, commanded by R.S.M. Wilson, a man who commends himself from being able to whip up slagging soldiers into shape, played with immaculate vigour by Harry Andrews. Over 20 years in the business, Wilson is a veteran and a representation of the classic military commanders we've seen in film, such as the likes of Staff Sergeant Gunnery, whose methods of commiserating and encouraging involve barking orders in the faces of exhausted men. But though he starts off looking like an atypical brute, Wilson does possess something which remotely represents moral fibre, a sentiment which cannot be attributed to Staff Sergeant Williams, the man who he issues command of Roberts and the rest to. Williams is the kind of character we love to hate, a lowly creature who projects his own insecurities onto others, who bulldozes past the stages of abusing his power and straight up tortures the inmates. His favourite method is to give the boys a few lap of the hill, a pyramid of sand and clay about five metres high which the prisoners, when punished, have to run up and down over repeatedly in full gear and sometimes carrying extra weight or a handicap like a gas mask. No small feat, especially in the sweltering heat of the African sun. The difficulty is made all the more apparent when Williams himself is unable to last more than a few rounds when he has a go in a sort of test for himself, despite doing it privately in his nightwear and in the evening. Williams reminded me of a sadistic character from The Green Mile, Curly, I think his name was, another snivelling, sorry excuse for a human being who revels in exercising authority over others. Williams pumps you with fury as he uses his position to spread injustice, and the prisoners must find a way to shield themselves from his wrath. Only one officer, Harris, is sympathetic to the abused inmates, but finds his help is limited because of his rank. Those brave enough to stand up to the likes of Williams find themselves laboured or blackmailed into submission. The Hill is a spellbinding display of tyranny, of respect and dignity, of camaraderie in the face of injustice and oppression, of brutish military dehumanisation and authoritarian leadership. It's a lesson in masterclass acting, in carving fully fleshed out characters and conflict, in developing characters with depth who change and evolve over time. It's a stimulating examination of the effects of lust and abuse of power has on those abused and those who are doing the abusing, giving us many memorable scenes. Take King imitating an ape after an avalanche of racist abuse, Roberts and Williams shouting matches out in the sand fields, and Williams' verbal game of chess and swinging of power during the, pro uh, the protest. It's a superb film, one of Lumet's very best. I was quite taken aback by the camera work, which I expected to be quite vanilla and ordinary given when the film was made. 
Instead, it kicked me in the teeth for my assumptions with a head-scratchingly intricate long take which opens the film, paving the way for a tour de force showmanship in using cinematography and stark images to highlight the changing story, mood and the excruciating conditions the inmates are forced to endure. There are pop shots which put us directly into the shoes of the characters as they march up and down the hill. The camera shakes and jitters, exemplifying the disorientating effects of malnutrition and heat exhaustion. The sun is ever-present, punishing the victims with further pain. Captured to such an extent by Lumet, you start to feel sweaty. The editing is sharp and precise, but retains the trademark Lumet grit that gives the film almost a documentary feel. Camera angles intelligently evoke the anguishing sense of claustrophobia and establish the dominance of some characters over others. It's staggering that a film that feels so quintessentially British was directed by a so-called New York director, but is yet another testament to Lumet's talent. It's also amazing that he took what is essentially a stage play and putting his stamps all over it made it brutal, visceral, and a no-nonsense torpedo of masculine energy and a condemnation of the military process. I give the movie an 8.5 out of 10.